Folks, it's happening. The Taste Buds live stream. Tickets are officially on sale. Where? At this link right here on the screen. You can click, 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 click that. Or copy, copy, copy that. And you can go get yourself a ticket for the live stream. Taste Buds live. Coming to you for the first time ever. When? May 10th. What time? 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're doing it. We got some special guests coming through. We got some special things happening. There is a lot of fun stuff going to be going down. And we've got a battle that is more epic than anything we have ever done on this show. Me against Sal, the battle, the buds coming together with some special guests, some special surprises, all of it shooting straight to you into your living room from our studio into your home. That simple, folks. Click that link. Use that link. Buy from that link. Get your ticket now. Taste Buds, live, May 10th, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What's up, guys? Come see me on the road right now. Go to SavileCanoComedy.com for tickets. Uh, Banger, Maine on April 27th. The Wang Theater in Boston. Three shows, April 28th and 29th that weekend. Uh, two shows are sold out, so there's one show left to get tickets. Then we go. Maverick Center in Utah, May 5th. Belco Theater in Denver, May 6th. Uh, let's see what else here. Then we go into Texas. We're going to Arlington, Austin at the Moody Center, and Sugarland, Texas at the Smart Financial Center, May 19, 20, and 21. And just to round out the summer right now, these are the last dates I have before the new dates are announced. There's going to be a lot of new dates announced soon, so if you don't hear it, just check back. But we got Columbus on June 2nd, Cleveland on June 3rd at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse and the Schottenstein Center, respectively. Two huge venues there. The Fox Theater in Detroit on June 4th. June 15th, we're in Minneapolis. Uh, June 16th, Des Moines at Wells Fargo Arena. June 17th, the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City. And the last dates right now before we announce new one ones, Nashville, Grand Ole Opry, July 27th. Uh, Gamebridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis on the 28th. And St. Louis, we got two in St. Louis on the 29th at the Stifle Theater and one there's tickets available so i hope to see you on the road and practical jokers every thursday night at 10 brand new episodes right now on tbs and true and please go to our store check out our merch we're about to sell out of this and we're about to launch a new one so this is the last chance to get some merch i'll see you guys on the road Joe DeRosa here, folks. I got live dates coming up this thursday april 6th i'll be in stamford connecticut at new york comedy club april 20th cleveland ohio at dunlap's corner bar two shows that night uh, you sold out the first one. We added a second, and I think the second one is almost sold out too. April 21st and 22nd, Columbus, Ohio at the Attic Comedy Club. We're doing four shows there. Baltimore, Maryland on April 28th and 29th at the Port Comedy Club, four shows. Uh, and then May 3rd, New York, New York, Crane Theater, the I Never Promised You a Rose Garden Residency. That might be the last time we do this in New York. Uh, so I don't know yet. But anyway, come out to that show. Come out to all the shows. JoeDeRosaInfo.com for all show information and tickets. And of course, if you're in New York, come to Joey Rose's. Open seven days a week, 11.30 a.m. every day. Food, drinks, fun. It's a great time. JoeyRosesNYC.com. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man. Hey, taste buddies, it's time for T A S T E buds. Taste buds. Joe DeRosa has the day off. You ever see the newscasters? I'm working on a bit about this. You ever see? Well, my guest today is my dear friend, hysterical comedian, Jay Larson, uh, sitting in with us today. A first time guest, right? First time. First time guest, long time friend. Uh, Jay, you also just get this right off top, right up top. Right up top. April 19th, uh, whether that has come or gone yet, it's right around. They were hovering around it. Jay has a special brand new on YouTube. Tell yep. them what, what we can get it. It's called Sounds Like Bruce on YouTube, backslash Jay Larson Comedy. Check it out. It's free, obviously. It's free. It's out now. Jay's hysterical. Jay tours with me and me and the guys. Actually, if you're going to be with us uh, on April 27th, 28th, 29th in Bangor, Maine, yep. and then three at the Wang in Boston on April 28th and 29th, Jay will be with us. Jay, Massachusetts native, not, yeah. uh, not Boston proper? or No, just... North, about 15, 20 minutes north. Jay was with us when we were there, and all the pipes burst in your city, and so we are coming back together. Uh, yeah, don't take it from me. Watch this podcast. You'll be, you'll see that you'll fall in love with Jay by the end of it, and you watch that goddamn YouTube special. At, at the, when, we, when the pipes burst, we were all standing out in the cold. You were in a heated car, remember? I was in a heated yeah, car. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, had, <laughs> I had pulled up in a car, and I was about to go in the back door. Yeah. You know. And... Uh, 
I, don't I was know. ready to I don't go even on. Know what that means? We were about to start. I like I was looking at my notes. Were, like, yeah. It was literally it was eleven minutes before the show. Yeah, it was. It was the audience was seated. Yep. And uh, an alarm went off as I was pulling up, and they said, "Don't get out." You know what? And my like crazy, like paranoid thing was like, "Did I do this? <laughs> did I? Did <laughs> I have anything to do with? Did me? I? Did I? Did I hang my coat on a like a <laughs> fight? You know?" Regular. But then the whole city was going Everything. crazy. Pipes Every, are bursting everywhere. That was wild. It said the coldest day in 125 years yeah. in Boston. But we had a. Uh, it was fun. Out list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. Which is a crazy because that weekend. We were, I forget where we were first, but you missed your flight. Oh God. And then didn't I didn't miss my flight. I made my flight. Then they canceled my flight, okay. put me in another flight. We were taking off and they were like, nah, plane's oh, broken. That's terrible. And you're like, all right. And then they put me in another flight. And then I had to, con- they changed my connector so I could get in on time. And then they, the crew didn't show up. And I, I got to the arena in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Oh, Pitt. When oh PPG when Shout out Pitts. I would have been getting off stage, so I you missed it. Even that, where, yeah, because Chris Johnson covered. Yes, and he walked off, and you walked off. I'm like, dude, you missed this by 20 minutes. Yeah, but he didn't say it that sincerely. You literally like we're walking on stage, <laughs> like you just missed it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I I, I know. <laughs> oh, I felt bad. <laughs> yeah. Um. So 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 do you have a little. Uh, well, we have so much to do today. So Tons. today's battle is for the cereal lovers, and we are going to be doing cinnamon toast crunch. All day. Which I have had for the first time over this pandemic versus uh, something I've been having since the day I was birthed, uh, Lucky Charms. First of all, if your parents gave you Lucky Charms the, like, the second day out they of the ground, womb. They liquefied it. They liquefied yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. You can. I had uh, it every three hours for can. the first two months. And that's what they just, this is going to no, be a actually, superhuman. Lucky Charms was one of my cereals that I almost, I broke up with for a while. Me and Pimpy were talking about this. I broke up with salmon at one point. I broke up with Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And I broke up with uh, Lucky Charms because I, I ate them too much that I was like, this is, I like changed my desire for the taste. Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, can we just go back? Is anyone really in a committed relationship with salmon? Is anyone like True. salmon? It's suck me and you forever. No yeah, one. Yeah. You're just like, yeah, I guess. No, but salmon's I like that sa- chick. Salmon. I used to buy it at the market. I used to order it in a restaurant, and I, I would like I would love salmon. I used to order at a wedding. It's always one of the three. No way. Yeah, you were taking salmon at a wedding over the steak of the chicken. Sometimes, depending on my mood, Woo. I won't let beef dictate my life. Never. I I mean, beef is just always just like a splurge. Like we're gonna be at a wedding. Of course, I'm doing the, the steak. Filet. Yeah, Chateaubriand. Yeah, don't give me the porterhouse though. Yeah. Interesting. What? But you're you pre you pre pick that. You don't show up at the wedding and be like, yeah, I'm in a salmony kind of mood. You're at your house and you're looking at the invite. Oh, that's not always the case, is it? I don't know if it's always the case, I, but you I, like to be that guest that lets them know ahead of time. If it's there, I'm choosing. Gotcha. You know, but I uh, day of, I, but I'll tell you right now, I haven't had salmon, and I've been to fine dining where my lady has had salmon and said, "This is outrageous. You got to try it." And I was like, "I'm sorry, but I broke up with salmon." Sorry, I just and I can't. have, I can't, I can't do it because I'm afraid I'll taste it and remember why I didn't want it anymore. Yeah, and I don't need to put myself through that. See, that's one of the weekly meals we make for the kids. You know, like when when I was married, and I know she still makes salmon, I make it, and my my kids would always eat it, and now my son is just like. Okay, and he'll just go to get through the salmon. That's wild because your kids are younger. Your kids are what? Eight? Nine and seven. Nine and seven. Yeah. I said eight. I was right in the middle. You're right there. Yeah. I average two wheelhouse. kids together. Yeah. Uh, I would have never eaten salmon. I don't think I, have e- I ate a fish other than a fish stick until I was like 18. Same, dude. I mean, yeah. I grew up in Massachusetts. You were eating Gordon's fish sticks, mm-hmm. or every now and then my mother would bust out a frozen swordfish. I'm like, you want some swordfish? And I, you're like, a frozen swordfish? Swordfish is a very underrated fish. You didn't get fish. that in the, in the freezer aisle? Yeah, that's where you get it. Really, dude? No one. We never had fresh food ever. All of our veggies came food. out of a can. Yeah, my yeah. my again, my 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 uh, the old lady. Yeah, ball and chain. I'm trying to think of different ways to call her, but she grew up fresh food, uh, like wow. ve- vegetables, fruit. Like cooked. she grew up in a commune. Yeah, you know, right. I, I didn't know nothing of that. Yeah, I mean, literally, I didn't eat fresh food. Like my family was just cans. That's it. Frozen's. That's how we rock. Yeah, it. but my kids now everything's fresh. I mean, yeah. my broccoli I buy frozen. I boil it. You know what I mean? I won't. Put, I won't put you on a cross for it. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. But I feel the same thing. Like uh, you know, when I uh, am growing a family, they will eat fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Growing a family. Yeah. That should be your next show. Growing, growing a, family a family with Sal Volcano. I would do that. I'm very I'm very private. So if I grew a family and I advertised it, people might notice. Yeah. You have some DeRosa. So we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to a go, lot to go through. 
Dude, I met. See, I was so stoked to do this because I just wanted to sit here and just hammer Derosa. Obviously, we're. All, I mean, we all. Everyone knows each other, and yeah, and everybody wants to just crush Derosa. You, yeah. Don't you? Nobody wants to agree well, I'll tell with you, Joe. I, I actually had to give Derosa a pep talk because when we started this podcast mm-hmm. a couple of years back. He felt like, oh, I'm getting piled on, and they're never gonna like me. And um, he he would sometimes be like, you know, because you're you you they know you, they don't know me. And I'm like, but just be yourself. But then he was like himself. Yeah. And then he was like, you know, he was, you know, he he can be. He's an intense personality. Oh my but god. I, but I, I I think everyone has come to love him. I and love I Joe. And I don't think anyone has a prejudge a predisposition for us when we start episodes anymore. I yeah. feel like they feel like we are. As it was meant to be. Yeah. I don't know who I'm going to go with today. Sal had the better argument today. Joe was more annoying today. Sal was more annoying today. Joe had a better, you know. Yeah. So it's now it's now it's even. But I've known DeRosa. We did Montreal Comedy Fest together in 2005. That's when I met Joe. So you met way before me. You met and, him 10 years before me. Yeah. And to me, Joe was like the, uh, he's the Paul Giamatti of the comedy world. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? That's oh, who yeah. he is That's to me. That's the perfect way to describe yeah. him. And we did this. This was the last time that like Joe was out in L.A. I was living in L.A. pre-pandemic. And we doing this show. It's, uh, you know, like Ari show. Remember Ari show? Um, this is not happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I did it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, you know, he does like the, just a regular live show. Yes, yes, yes. And the to- I forget what the topping was, but like Joe was on the show. I was on the show. And I remember I had some resentment going on because like I had asked Ari to do his podcast. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll get you a date. And I'm like, all right. And so I'm there that night. And I- Ari sees Joe and he goes, what's up? Are you do- are you ready to do the podcast tomorrow? I'm like, fucking, do- what, the Rose is doing the podcast? Right. I can't do the po-. You know, so we do the show. <laughs> Joe does his story. He has a good set. I do my story. I have a good set. I'm getting ready to leave. I'm like, I'm like, all right, Joe, good to see you, buddy. He goes, hold on, we'll walk out together. And I go, all right. So like, we go to walk out together, and then he gets stopped by fans, and they're like, Joe. Yeah. So he's talking to these fans, and I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. He goes, I thought we were walking out together. I go, we were, and now you're talking <laughs> to fans. Yeah, you're stopping, yeah. So we're walking in the parking lot. He's like, ah, I didn't like that set I had. And I go, you were great. It was great. And he goes, nah, I don't know. It wasn't that good. And I'm like, I think you did fine, buddy. He goes, I've done that story three other times on the show, but for like different categories, you know, it does better. <laughs> you don't understand. I could. This is so him. This yeah, it's so, so him. I, everything you're saying, I've, I and I go, I go, daily. I go. I hear you, man. He goes, yeah, but there was a manager there to see me. I'm like, dude, you were. It was good. And he goes, you know what's really bothering me? And I go, what? He goes, that you're not telling me like it was like top notch, like that it was great. And I go, you want the truth though? You want me to tell you it was top notch? And he goes, tell me the truth. I go, the truth is you've done the story three times on the show. I go, come up with something new. You're a talented guy. I go, you're a headliner. Why are you complaining to me? And he's like, I don't like this about you. And I go, I go, Joe, I love you. But we don't need this conversation. And he goes, are you going to do my podcast or what? I go, I told you I would do your podcast. And he goes, no, you said. And I go, no, I didn't. And he told me there was a text conversation. Okay. And I go, I'll bet you 100 bucks right now I didn't say that. And he goes, how about the 20 bucks we just made for the show? I go, done. We go into the text conversation. I hadn't said it. And he goes, see? You hadn't. I, no, I hadn't said it. I go, see, I hadn't said it. He goes, yeah, but you said that you would do the podcast. I go, that's not what we bet on, Joe. Right. And he goes, He's holding the 20 and he goes, are you really going to take this 20 from me? And I go, not only am I going to take this 20 from you, yeah, but I'm going to tell everyone yes. that I took it when you were at your lowest point <laughs> and you couldn't believe in yourself. And I never spent that 20. I left it in my, <laughs> no, I just, yeah. No. What I should have done is ripped it up. I should have taken no, it and just shredded it up. Oh, if he was here today and you took that 20 and ripped it up on camera, yeah. do you still have it or no? You, you, I had it in my closet. I don't it. know where it is right. now. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely. And that's why it. I was just like, every time I watch the clips, anytime I listen to the podcast, I'm just like, Oh God! Like every now and then, when Joe, I'm like on Joe's side. I'm like, all right, all right, Joey D, Joey D. Well, I, w- I I very much appreciate the support you have for this podcast because early on you were vocal in posting about it. Like you kind of joined the conversation a lot. Yeah, and that's really fun because sometimes, like you know, people see a clip, or sometimes they'll be like, oh, we love the podcast, but they haven't really seen it, or they don't really love it. They just you just say it to say it. But I feel like you are invested because we talk a lot about the battles. And yeah, stuff. I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it. And you were, and uh, I'm a food head, dude. I could talk. Food, candy, any of it, all day. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. were going to open a restaurant? Oh, no, you were going to open a... Uh, you had a concept. I tried to buy this bodega. I got pretty close with this guy. He may have started a big-time online reservation company, because he did. And uh, OT? No. R? Yep. Okay. And uh, I like... and I we <laughs> Resi? <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Oh, did uh, you know? No, I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter. Right, right. And anyway, he got wow, the place you, and I had you a You almost whole... opened a business with the guy who started Resi? Yeah. And now... I didn't almost... And now you only I see him when he flies it. overhead on his, on his jet? Well, he was already flying overhead at that point. Okay. <clears throat> 
we pitched him the idea. He had a different idea. Then he got the building. Then I went to him and I'm like, hey, maybe I could be involved. This I was like, I'm not going to all of a sudden open up a restaurant. You know right. what I mean? What am I, Jonah right. Rosa? And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to do this, like my whole concept was I wanted to do a sandwich place that was like the, the menu was blue collar or bougie. So like if you got like a breakfast sandwich, you say, let me get a breakfast sandwich. I go blue collar or bougie. And blue collar would be English muffin, egg, bacon, cheese. Right. Boom. Six bucks. Right. Bougie would be like brioche roll, aioli, arugula tossed in, you know, olive I oil. It. I love the concept. You know, and then like a baked Gruyere egg, like, you know, square, you I know. know it. It's a great concept. But you have a limited menu and you do both things really well. Yes. And both. And like the bougie is like 14 bucks and blue collar is like six. I love it. Yeah. I love the idea. Chicken sandwich. You didn't like you know. it? I never even got to that point. Like, I wanted to be like, there's this great, like, uh, little general store in, in uh, Healdsburg, okay? And it's called the Dry Creek Country Store. It's this great little, it's right out in the middle of wine country, and, like, all the pickers and growers come, and they drink beer on the front steps, and they make these amazing sandwiches. That's kind of what I wanted to, like, concept. It feels like a million-dollar idea. I wanted to call it Marvis the Bait and Tackle Shop, but we wouldn't sell any bait and tackle. It was just, like, the place, the last place on the dock before you hit the lake for the weekend. Okay, so you wouldn't call it Bougie or Blue? So that would just be on the menu. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it would be Marvis the Bait and Tackle. It's like a little grocery store in my neighborhood where you could pick up things. Oh, you know what I mean? Like I get wine, think, get cheese, well, you cereal. Know, you Maybe you uh, cereal. What cereal's maybe on the you, counter? Uh, patent, can you patent an idea for a restaurant? No, nah. no, I don't just think. Don't, nobody open that restaurant, please. Don't. Be you know what? Soul. It's like, what are we going to do here? I yeah. tried to get severity brake lights. You know what I mean? I tried yeah. to patent that and I couldn't do it. So, so what? Severity brake lights. That was going to be my idea. Severity? Severity brake lights. Here's your license plate, right? Your brake lights start at the edge of the thing, and they go all the way to the edge of the car. And depending on how hard you're pressing on the brakes, they go ding, ding, ding. Does that exist? No. This is my idea. You're Severity brake lights. So you can tell how hard someone's braking. So if you see it go all the way up, you're like, oh, shit. Like someone's Not slamming. only that, when you jam on the brakes, they go, and then they go, bum, 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 bum. You know when you're cruising down the highway and you're like, oh, look, everybody's just coasting. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, ah! Yeah, 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 yeah. No, any, not anymore. Wow. Severity brake lights, bro. And w w w how do you get that done? I, you know, I went to an invention company. You know that one where the guy's you, like hammering the wheel? Yeah, you don't do that. I think that those are scams. Well, I went they, to they them. They're there to pillage you. This was 21 years ago. And they yeah. never. I moved to LA and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? Not just become a comedian. Right. I'm going to break That's into the right. car game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You ever hear that story about the guy who created like intermittent wipers? The no. guy who came up with the switch for sure. is like a billionaire. Sure. You know what I mean? I that was guy like, right That's now is going to be me. Yeah, he's, he's watching this being like, you know it. <laughs> drinking champagne. Wow. You were like, I, you were like, you know, you know where the Venn diagram where uh, electronic lights, automobiles, and comedians meet? That's me. That's, <laughs> it's a very small group. <laughs> Safety. Comedy, lights, yeah. Now, you said you also have a cereal invention? I do. I mean, this was another thing I wanted to come up with. Again, these are all patented. Don't. Don't I, don't you dare. I do think someone came out with this idea. Okay. Sugared milk. It was just going to be sugared milk. So they. I think they do have oh, a cereal so milk. You know yeah. what I mean? Because all we want at the end of the milk bowl bar of cereal, cereal is... Milk. Who does? Milk bar. Yeah. You, should, you can get it while you're here and test it out, see if you like it. Yeah. It's sweet. It's good, though. Yeah. That was a long time ago. I'm like, oh, sugared milk would be such a great so, idea. So you're saying you sell it to drink it, like yes. like the drink of when your seal's done, and that's yeah. that's how they do it. Okay, it just you're not saying milk. that you you you, pour, you use the milk to pour into no. the seal. Okay, no, okay. unless you were doing some like unless you were like, no pun intended, a cereal killer, and you were drinking like regular Cheerios, eating regular Cheerios. You know what I mean? Right. Like who's going regular Cheerios? Yes. I am gonna say that it was intended. Uh, there was a, there's a debate going on online right now. There's no, no uh, picture here, babe. No. There's a debate going on online right now that I just heard of, and I think the answer is very clear. It's very clear. And it is, how do you, I guess, how do you eat your cereal, right? How do you prepare your cereal? How do you prepare your cereal? Do you pour in the cereal and then pour in the milk, or do you pour in the milk and then pour in the cereal? Um, I I can't believe this is even a question. I I can't either. Uh, I I can because I'm going to throw something at you afterwards. Okay, that, that's probably I hope is going to blow your mind. Okay, I feel like we align on a lot of things. Yeah, 
This is just like the only time, the only cereal I would ever see this would make sense where you put the milk in first would be grape nuts because they sink, you know what I mean? And then it's like, but why are you deciding that milk is the, that cereal is a variable? You always put in how much cereal you want. And then and you then put the you, amount the milk. of milk based on the amount of cereal. Thank you. You don't pour the milk and then put the amount of cereal based on the amount of milk. That's no. insanity. It's, it's, it makes no sense at all. It's well, all going to get to the top. It floats anyway. It's 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 ridiculous to me to pour milk into an empty bowl. I don't, I would, I before today would have thought, oh, they did pull it. And how many people have 42,000? Okay, great. So it's 93.5% pour you. of the cereal first. So there are people out there, six people out of every hundred that pour milk into a bowl and then pour their cereal. Why? I don't, I, I, I think Why? just to be different maybe? Like who, first of all, that's passed down. It is, it is. That doesn't come, no, no. one No one started no that. No way, That's no way. something you did in we're your family. Born, we're all born pouring cereal first. Yeah. And if that changes because of it's, uh, it's nurture. It's not nature. So let me tell you something that I saw my Aunt Val do when I was a kid and it, it blew my mind. Okay. She was making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for me. I like it already. She had a piece of bread out, piece of bread. When okay, peanut butter, sandwich. right? Yeah. Then jelly on top of the peanut butter, then close the sandwich. I've seen it done. But it's, why? You go peanut butter here, jelly here, and then you, you do the whole deal. I got to be honest with you. Yeah. I I probably do it as much either way. You do both? And now that I'm saying it out loud, I don't know why I do that. I don't well, either. Well, you know what it is? I think that maybe I'm having a much more accurate uh, visual of the peanut butter to jelly ratio, the reality of it, as opposed to like painting on the canvas here, painting on the <laughs> canvas here. You know what I mean? It's like one canvas, I think. I'm going to tell you something right it's now. Tricky. Michelangelo would do separate. He would do separate. He wouldn't be, you know, cascading yeah. it over good, here. That's a good question to ask. You know? Yeah. Mustard mayo when you're making a sandwich. You go mustard on one, mayo on the other, or do you put them together and mix them? Uh, I don't do mustard mayo, but I would put them separate. But I'll tell you what I do do is mm -hmm. I'll tell you what happens there. You f up that that knife. You f up the uh, it, it, bro. If you're putting it on the same one, then you're going back in the jelly with the peanut butter, and you're getting peanut butter in the jelly. Sal, everyone knows the move. You peanut butter the one side, you wipe it, and then you wipe on the the plain piece. Yes. Then you go into the jelly. I know. Yeah, I do that too. I do that too. But I wouldn't think that it would something that would blow someone away. I just thought it was. You ever do it that way? PBJ, put the jelly right on the peanut butter, or no? Always, 100%? Yeah. Pimp? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. I just throw the food on a thing and put it inside. <laughs> 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 That's a recipe. I throw the food on the thing and put it inside me. Um <laughs> It's also like some little dirty talk right there. You know what I mean? Like that's how, you, put that's right how you right get going. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah. how you start it up. I'm trying to think if I have any any odd food quirks. Uh, how about this? I'll tell you a, a thing that we used to do as kids. Yeah. You ever do this? We would get a hot dog right out of the fridge and just right out of the package. No. No cook. Boop. It's uh, already cooked. I, just, I know it's already cooked. A cold hot dog. I've told my kids about They're like, get out of that's my face. Insane. So here's the thing. You're right. It's cooked, right? It's cooked. So it shouldn't be like a... <gasps> We all clutched our pearls, though. Yeah. Because it just sounds Oh, I'm going to go one off. deeper. I'll go one one further. Yeah. My mother used to make hamburgers with ground meat, and we go over and grab the ground meat and eat it raw. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh that, no, that's you could die. Wait a minute, why, you are you, why are you guys in such a rush for the- I party? don't know, man. There's four of us. Wait, We're just getting for scraps. Wait, 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 you don't know what you're going to get. Your mother didn't, didn't- Of course, she would be like, get out. You, no, you're well, not well, doing well, that. Wait, 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 you ever wait. had steak tata? -ta? I have. Okay. But that's a certain grade of steak, and that's being prepared by- a uh, good chef. <laughs> but, true. But your mom, but, but you, you, what, 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 was it seasoned? No, it was like, I just remember was grabbing she, right off the of package. This, oh, no. Yeah. But, but what taste? There was you, no season. My, there was no seasoning in my house as a kid. <laughs> but wait, wait. I will say that, hey, I'm, listen, I'm being open here, guys. I'm trying <laughs> to be vulnerable. <laughs> I see where DeRose is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking like, but, but like, why would you even desire that? Because it's, it's, it's got to be t terribly tasting. It's not. It's raw, it's unseasoned ground chuck. How do you get your? <laughs> First of all, we probably weren't even getting ground chuck. Okay. We get whatever star market had available okay. on discount. You, I mean, when you get a burger, you go medium rare. How do you get it? Medium. Okay. Yeah. See, I like it raw in the middle. Medium rare is too much. It's it's 
it's still bleeding. It gets it gets cold faster. Well, I mean, I yeah, I definitely don't want. I've bitten in before and had cold in the middle. You're like, all right, yeah. guys, this is a little much. But I love a tartare. I'm not gonna lie about it. I've done a tartare, a carpaccio, if you will. Yeah, I love a carpaccio. And uh, you know, I sometimes I have to get, psych myself up to get there. Yeah. And sometimes I'm eating. It tastes good, but I'm like, what am I doing right now? But you know. You do it. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what's your mother's reaction while she's cooking? And you're I can't remember. She didn't cook that much, let's be honest. You know what I mean? She was a single mom siblings, of four. Your siblings would run up and eat the rum. No, I just rem- I can I can see it on the count on the st- like we had this stove that had like a a work surface as well and like you could get around this way to the guest bath and I remember just like grabbing some and eating it. And I I know the taste. Like I know the taste of raw hamburger meat. What does it taste like? It's it's very good. No, it's it's pretty good, no, man. No, it can't be. It's I'm like, Dude, hey, you 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 gonna have a host of issues after that, <laughs> dude. I, we were when we were kids, you could eat dirt. Like there was nothing yeah, that was we, ever. Yeah, yeah, people ate dirt. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> people ate dirt. People ate dirt. Great restaurant on 82nd Street. They just... <laughs> well, so you know what I recently I found out that they they say raw cookie dough actually is is dangerous to eat. And I use I and, use and the batter though? off the mixer. Of course, like, uh, the, you know the, the two the the, yeah. the hand mixer. Rocky's eating raw eggs. What are we talking about? Yeah, here? right, right. So, so is it the eggs? Why it's dangerous? No, because I eat cookie dough, be what it raw is. cookie dough. I don't. Need, I mean, I I never even hesitated. Well, you know what else is in cookie dough? What sugar, flour, both you can eat raw. Mm. Eggs, milk. It's the eggs. It's the same with like. Um, when I make brownies with the kids, I come home like, you want to lick the bowl? Like, yeah, who doesn't want to lick the bowl? I remember when I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, it's the best. So here's the thing. I remember when I saw it because it, someone marketed cookie dough you can eat. And I was like, what do you mean cookie dough you can eat? I just lop off the Pillsbury dough. I just open that, yes. that thing and I just eat it like, of it's, course. A, like, like it's a fucking Slim Jim. <laughs> I just hold it in my hand and chew it. Yeah. Like, and, and, and I didn't realize you, could, you, can get, you can get. Let me just tell you, it's saying, it's saying germs, okay? I am, listen, as a guy with kids, and I know you're a kind of a germaphobe. Yeah. I am, I don't give a shit about any germs. Nothing. Three sheet, you don't care. I'm not like, you're going to wash your hands before dinner. I'm just like, whatever. Okay. You're going to get germs. That's what made our generation impenetrable. Yeah, but knock, knock. Yes. Who's there? Sal. (laughs) Sal who? Salmonella. (laughs) Oh, shit. You got to be careful there. Yeah. Salmonella kids, comes from what, careful. though? Do you know what it comes from? Chicken cutlets. Chicken, raw eggs, chicken. Raw chicken, yeah. And eggs. Yeah, but who's... I'm cleaning up after that. I'm not a. I'm not an animal. You know what I mean? But I'm saying, like, if my kids come to the table, like, and they haven't washed their hands, I'm not like, oh, you got to wash your hands. I'm just like, if you got okay. germs outside or whatever, you know, like, my daughter wants to feed hands squirrels. Hands I'm not... Take hey, your hands out of your mouth, no? Nope. Okay. Well, then my kids don't have their hands in their mouths. You know what I mean? Okay. They're older now. Back okay. when they did, you know, you might be like, what are you not on your hands for? Yeah. But like my daughter, wants, we have squirrels in the backyard that come over like crazy and she's got like nut. They're like, they'll come right up to her. I'm like, you can feed them. She goes, if they bite me, I'll get rabies. I go, no, you won't. You might. I go, let's look it up. And it's not even true. It's not even true that you'll get rabies. Really? Yeah. Look it up. You could. Not every squirrel. Squirrels that bite. are wild. Squirrels are wild. I know they're wild. So am I, bro. Let's get down. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'll show this fucking squirrel who's wild. Bite me, motherfucker. Fuck off. <laughs> squirrels are like, damn. I just don't sweat. He's it. nuts. Look at Let small me, rodents I'll, like squirrels, I'll, I'll, hamsters, I'll go back pigs, home now. are almost never found to be infected with rabies and have not been known to transmit rabies to humans. You know, Pimpy, I uh, am. Celebrated a birthday not that long ago, and I realized that I didn't have life insurance. And I don't know what age is supposed to get it. I don't know if my parents ever got it, but I've been thinking about it nonstop, and I am in the process of getting it now. Now, I don't know if you want to look into life insurance as a young lad, but I don't think there's ever a time that you shouldn't have it, right? The weather's warming up. The flowers are starting to bloom. It's the perfect time to take a fresh look at this type of stuff, your financial planning. If you're meaning to get life insurance and you've been putting it off, I think now is the time to do it. So Fabric by Gerber Life will help you protect your future no matter what happens. It'll help organize your financial future. Uh, You start with life insurance, okay? It's a one-stop shop for you and your family's needs, financial needs, offering high-quality term life insurance policies plus other financial solutions in one easy hub. Fabric was designed by parents for parents. That's another thing. If you have kids and you don't have life insurance, you have to act immediately. Because you need to do that to protect your children and your family, okay? Uh, it was designed by parents, for parents, to help you get high-quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policy in less than 10 minutes. Uh, 
Life insurance can get a bad rap for being complicated, but Fabric makes it easy to apply with its seamless digital experience. It's all online and it's all on your time. And if you need extra support, Fabric's team of licensed insurance agents can answer any questions along the way. It takes less than 10 minutes to apply, to see your quote, and then personalize your quote to fit your family's needs. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required as a 30 day money back guarantee and you can cancel at any time protect your family today with fabric by gerber life apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash taste buds that's meetfabric.com slash taste buds m-e-e-t fabric.com slash taste buds policies are issued by western southern life assurance company not available in certain states prices subject to underwriting and health questions guys Rocket Money. We love them. They are on the show all the time, uh, and uh, it is a great product. I don't know if you know it or not. We use it personally. Um, it's basically, did you ever have subscriptions that you may have forgotten about, and then maybe you don't know they're out there, or maybe you know and you want to cancel it, and it is a song and dance to cancel something. you got to write an email. you got to find the link that's on the page that's on 10 pages and you can't cancel stuff. Rocket Money will help you cancel all your subscriptions. Uh, it will not be time consuming. It will save you money. Basically, you, you you make an account and it will tell you all your outstanding subscriptions. And if you want to cancel something, you do it with the touch of a button, all aggregated on Rocket Money's website. And you hear it all the time. Try this free for 30 days. And then you try it, you forget, and they keep they keep recurring. And then maybe you're like me. You see, oh, $5.99 uh, for this app that I got. And I'm like, I got to, when I have the chance, I have to go in and cancel that. And I see the $5.99 charge every single month, and I just don't do it. Rocket Money is basically a personal finance app that finds and cancels the unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. It'll quickly and easily find those for you. And if you don't want to pay anymore, you just hit Cancel. It also helps you manage your finances by automatically categorizing your expenses so you could track your budget in real time, get alerts, all that kind of stuff. Over 3 million people have used it, saving an average of $720 a year. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash taste buds. That's rocketmoney.com slash taste buds. Rocketmoney.com slash taste buds. When you have rabies, they're going crazy. Oh, yeah, You know, yeah. you don't go up to some squirrel that's fucking tweaking. How do they get rabies? I don't know. Who bit them? Who's biting them? How do you get rabies? Some... How do you get rabies? Yeah, but who... But how do you get a rabies sandwich? Is that what... Rabies is virus direct transmitted contact. through direct contact, such as broken skin or mucus membranes in the eyes, nose, and mouth, with saliva and... Of a rabid and... animal. So not just No, but how chill... does that animal get rabid? Like, how did they get rabid? By the way, I love that we are just Googling and the first thing comes up, we're like, we'll believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what everyone does. Whatever they say yeah, is true. Exactly. Yeah. It's also possible rare for rare for it's from the non bite experience. Yeah, but how does a rabid animal get rabies? Maybe they eat bad meat. Uh, I'm not sure how. It could be bad meat. Really? I think so. So You know what else you can get from bad? This is the one thing you can get from raw meat. Tapeworm. Tapeworm. Yeah. And now what is that? A I that's don't know. A worm. I'm not an expert, Sal. <laughs> that's a worm. That's because it's a couple of different types of worms, right? Yeah. You can ring get a tapeworm that like worm, lives inside your body. Worm. Tapeworm's fucked up. Tapeworm is a physical worm that is eating your food that you're digesting. Something like that. And and a tapeworm just forms. I don't know. I never even understand how flies just show up or worms. Like, how do these things just oh, like show the, up? The, yeah, like the, you have like a the closed whole, trash people, barrel, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden there's like Max, 50. The Max. Yeah, what's yeah. going on in there? So I, I don't know if I want to watch this, but let's do I it. I don't want to see a 32-foot a tapeworm. Pa tapeworm? So, it, it, so is it not a worm? Is it just like it's <sighs> it's not a it, – is it like a parasite? Is it actual like li – like, Eating raw, undercooked meat Anytime or fish. Anytime I see larval or larva, I get yeah. a little, you know. Oh, the smoked fish might have larval cysts. Okay. You know. Okay, let's see. What is a tapeworm? Digestive problems, including abdominal pain, loss of appetite, weight loss, and upset stomach. The most visible sign is active passing of tapeworm segments <laughs> through your ass. So you should have not. How do you know if you have tapeworms? Doctors will collect and examine stool sample on three different days. Oh, that's that's even, come on. MRI brain? MRI of the brain or other organs to look? But is it tapeworm? How do you get rid of it? Next one. Next one down. 
Medicine. Medicine taken by the mouth. But is it like, is it just like, it looks like a worm, but it's some type of... Yes. It's not an actual worm. I no, I know think. it's not like a worm like on the ground, but is it is it is it like, is it like, if you extract one, is it alive? Or is it just like a... a piece Bacteria. Of ma- yeah, yeah, right. right. I, I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't... I'm one of these people that like I don't need to have the answer sometimes yeah. until like like I got confronted so get, with the, get issue. the issue. Yeah. What? What's a? I mean, it's gross. It's disgusting. Yeah. What's a ringworm? I mean, this is how we're kicking off the food episode. You know yeah. what I mean? You just yeah, wanna, right. yeah. Okay. Just want to make you know. Sure. What? I like a glowworm. Glowworm's nice. Glowworms are nice. Yeah. yeah, they're a good vibe. A ringworm. I don't think it's just a rash, right? Yeah. Okay. Why do they call it a worm though? All right, let's move on. Yeah, should we? Yeah, okay, good. I'm so, um, we, we we were talking about something earlier, and I was like, we were diving into that. breakfast yeah. stuff. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, but all right, we can get into the bat. Where are we? No, I was gonna say, but we wrote we wrote so because we I was like, save this, save this. Yeah, this was from the breakfast okay. issue. Yeah, cause, uh, and it was I think a little bit because I don't know what your reaction was, but I thought it had something to do with like you were a little hesitant, and I was saying that when I make breakfast for my kids. At least, at least once a week, I make pancakes. You know what I mean? Okay. I'll make breakfast sandwiches. Cereal for the kids happens maybe, maybe once every three weeks. Maybe. Wow. It's usually like you get in a stale box by that time. I know. That's if I, you've opened it already. I, I, I very rarely give them cereal. Wow. What I'll do is like, like I said, breakfast sandwiches with fruit, fruit pancakes, and like sausage or bacon. Uh, scrambled eggs and fruit and uh, something is else. Breakfast a fun thing for the like. I love is it. the most fun communal like to make it yeah you know everyone's it's a rise and shine type deal it's you're I probably love it. home and off or maybe you're running out of the house but breakfast feels like the, the meal you make with the kids like, we got to leave for school at like five minutes to eight I wake them up at seven okay I get them up at seven I'm like I'm gonna start making breakfast they come in they sit at the table my son usually is reading he reads like crazy she'll draw I'll, I'll sometimes I'll music on I make breakfast Give it to them. I make their lunches. Then they get dressed. That's our morning. You know, it's the best. Wow. And they fall in line. Oh, yeah. They do their They're thing. They're reading. They're writing. That's not- They go get ready. Yep. What year do they start getting ready on their own? Uh, I mean, they go pick out their own clothes, do all that deal now. They're in first and third grade. I'd say maybe like- They got their own clothes. Yeah. Yeah. So when that happens, are you like, do you feel- that you My have- daughter's in first grade does full outfits, dude. Like full. beret, different hats, matching. What do you think about- Like, she's super into it. My that's son awesome. was just like- can I get some shorts and a t-shirt? Right, right And he right. likes a soft t-shirt. I'm like, bro, how about some, you're wearing jeans today. I'll give you five bucks. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, I'll switch it up. So, so when they start to do, get independent like that, do you feel like, is it like, oh, this is bittersweet because I used to like doing that with them and now they're becoming a, uh, self-sufficient? Or is it like, oh God, thank you because now I'm getting more minutes of my life back? Oh no, it's, it, it's it's neither. I'm just like, I love doing no matter what it is because I just love being with them. Right. And uh, and I love that they just do it on their own. You know what I mean? But my right. son is like, you got to be like, socks and shoes, bro. Socks and shoes. And your my daughter's already dressed. She's right. ready to go. I'm like, then you got to pack your bag. I'll put their lunches out. They got to pack them. Get them in there. Get your stuff. Did you brush your teeth? Go brush your teeth. We got to go. We got to move. You know what I mean? And right. he's just like, I don't know where my shoes are. I'm like, right. I do. You left them in the garage. You know what I mean? And my daughter's like... Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so I'll, when I make pancakes, yeah, this is what we were I go heavy about. on the batter. You know what I mean? Cause I don't want to, you don't want to have not enough cause then you sure. got to make more. So sure. I make them up and one day I just made them and I was like, oh, I got like eight extra pancakes here, chocolate chip. Yeah. I laid out some tin foil, stacked them, folded them. And I looked at my daughter, go, you want to give these pancakes to your teacher? And she's like, yeah. And then I just started like, I'm like, oh, these guys are, they're rushing to school. They got to teach these kids. Why not? have my daughter show up with like some chocolate chip pancakes you know every once in a while this blew my balls off okay (laughs) because first of all i don't loose food is not in play in my life yeah i get presented loose food a lot people come to my shows they bake treats Mm -hmm. they you know i've gotten casseroles i've gotten baked goods and they hand to me and i i don't even hesitate i look them right in the face and i say thank you for your time and efforts yeah i'm being up front I can't eat this. Yeah. I can't take this from you. Yeah. This is, this is, I need factory sealed stuff. I, I, I get it. Even if they don't have ill intentions, mm-hmm. like maybe there's not something in there that would make me, 
but I don't know you. I don't know your standards. I don't know totally. what your situation is like. The kitchen you cooked it in. I don't know if you wash your hands. I don't know who you are. Right. I can't eat your food. Right. Your homemade food. I get. Sometimes that. people hand me when I'm on on stage. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just say pass it around. Yeah. People eat it. But they accepted these pancakes. I never, I never even took any of this into consideration. I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm just making food, and I go, here. And then- uh, I think this is what normal people do, and I think I'm l- crazy. I think, first of all, I definitely yes. think you're crazy. Crazy? Yeah, when, you, when you worked in the bar, you wouldn't share food. Like, if somebody brought you food when you worked in the bar- Fame aside, you, you're an unknown. Yeah. You're, you're just a guy on sure. the street. Sure. No, I would never eat someone's homemade food. Not, e- not even if, that they I regular, knew, if they're regular. That I knew. You're raising their uh, alcohol. There's a difference between a regular at the bar and someone that's in my life. If he brought me food, I would eat it in a second. If you brought me food, I would eat it in a second. If someone I don't know or know peripherally brings in food, I'm going to have a hard time, man. I, 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 it, it immediately becomes unappeasing, as a matter of fact. It immediately, be, I'm like, oh, what, 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 what. I mean, I'm, I'll, I go, I don't, like I said, I, it's not an issue for me. I'll dive all in. You know what I mean? But I've eaten off people's plates at restaurants. You know what I mean? You mean post? Dude, you know, when I used to wait, ta- <laughs> when I would, now listen, when I used to wait tables, yeah. I, first of all, I crushed. I could imagine. But you have, a, you have t- a personality that immediately delivers. One, one time, yeah. one time I had a couple. I feel like I, I know who you are. As soon as you say, hey, I'm Jay, I'll be a server tonight. Can yeah. I talk to you about the specials? I get a feel for you. Then all of a sudden I just, I like I do, I like to ingra- I like to ingratiate, throw banter back and forth. I feel like I would trust you right away. That, I appreciate yeah. that. And I and I worked hard to build that with my, my guests. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I, I mean, I used to do this a lot. I would, I'd have, let's say I have a couple. Right, they get the creme brulee. I come down. I'm like, I put it right in the middle of the table, and I go spoon, spoon, and then I put a third spoon down. And they, I'll never forget. They go, "What's that for?" I go, "That's for me." Boom, and I take the first bite, and I walk off, and they're dying, laughing, loving me, and they're just like, "This guy's off his rock." Oh my god, they, I'm having an actual physical reaction. To they that. loved it. I've never heard or seen anyone do that in my life, dude. One time, I'm waiting tables. I'm at a group of like five. You're the waiter. Yeah, I'm the waiter. The balls, dude. One time. I'm waiting tables. I'm at a group of five, and I come over. I'm like, we've already been h- hanging out. You know, this is I'm in the middle of the night, and there's a group of five. And I come over. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? They're like, we're talking about. Have you ever just gone up and kissed someone? They're like, what do you mean? Like, just walk up and just kiss them? They're like, yeah. I'm like, like no, but I bet I could with her. And it was another two top that I had, and I walk over to the table, and I didn't have the guts to just go do it. And I go, guys, they were talking about like going up and just kissing someone. I said I should come up and kiss you, and she goes, go ahead. And I boom, kissed her, and I look back. I'm like, what's up? And they were wow. like, oh, my God. We, this is a bit we've done on the show. I pay my mortgage with that bit. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, uh, I got to be honest. If, if Well, it depends who does it. Yeah. But if you were my waiter and you did that and you walked away, I would enjoy it. Well, because you're really not contaminating anything. No, I was the first bite in, but they, you know, they it's, went. With- it's it 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 it's it's hoots, but it's it's it, it it deserves a tip of the cap. Yeah, because it's so it's so ballsy. It, I've never seen it done, so it's so rare that you gotta appreciate it. Yeah, I did. I did That's have a backfire one time, like two times. I, I went up to like this. It was a daughter with her mom, and I was Wait, like, "How many times did you do it?" I'm I'm just talking about it as a waiter. Okay, and I was just like talking to the mom, and I like was like, "Check out mom over here," and like I was just have just being myself. Uh, and the mom took it super personal, and they like reported me, and they left. And the worst was I did have this this couple these two girls come in, and it was my first shift bartending, and it was a Monday night, so you get the Monday night shift, yeah. right? And I'm just talking to him and stuff, and the girls like I'm vibing hard with this one girl, and the other girl's like, "Hey, I'm allergic to mushrooms," and I go, "Okay, yeah," and she goes, "What about the pepperoni calzone?" I'm like, "No mushrooms." She goes, "You sure?" I go, "100 percent." Put it in, still vibing. We're all getting along. They get it. You she gets the calzone. She starts eating it, and she puts it down. She's like, "Oh my god!" And I go, "What's the matter?" She goes, "There's mushrooms in this." I go, "There can't be." And they made it wrong. It was not on me. And they're like, "She's like, I need to go right now. I have to go to the hospital." I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." And I followed him out on the way out. I asked her friend out. I'm like, "You think I could get your number?" And she's just like, "They called the restaurant the next day, and they were like, yeah, this guy tried to like pick up my friend when she was on the way to the hospital.'" <laughs> oh my god! You didn't get the number. No, nah, I didn't get the number. Uh, but again, the sack to ask after she was poisoned. It was the friend. The friend wasn't poisoned. Okay, you right, know what I mean. She just right. had to take her. You know, I'm not allergic to anything, sure, so I can't but, really but the relate. Scene was you know, set. she had yeah, a poisoned yeah, yeah, friend. Yeah, she was dying. Yeah. I, I would. I would. I would <laughs> she was definitely. I would have respected that too. Now, did you say right there? I. They made it wrong. Like it was. Oh yeah. You were cleared. Yes. So they weren't calling because no, they you, were. You they, got the mushroom. They were calling because they and they were friends with the owner. 
so that's like did where you know that of, no oh I didn't wow know that. So, what, so so what happened there he took me he called me to his office that was across the street and he called me and he's like you know jay last night uh you know these girls and i go oh yeah yeah yeah. i go i know the mushroom thing he goes you know they're friends and i they, they told me you asked her friend out and i go well we were kind of vibing you know what i mean mm -hmm. he's like jay the girl could have died and i go yeah i didn't know it was that serious <laughs> but you know the other one is and it. so he's like all right i'm gonna I'll, I'll keep you on monday nights but like just know you're on a short leash and i'm like i appreciate it you were bartending yeah Oh, that's yeah. You, know, you can ask people out of your bartender. No, I know. That yeah, comes yeah, yeah. with the territory. Comes with it. Comes that's crazy. With it. Um, yeah. Wait. So the teacher, how did they receive the pancakes? Did they think how I thought? Did they just take a? So my daughter came home and I go, "Hey, what did they think about the pancakes?" She's like, "They loved it." Do you guys? And then like a, a, that day forward, every day I was making pancakes. My daughter was like, "Don't forget to make some for my teachers." So I think I've done it a total of nine times. Nine times. Nine what movie? times. Ferris Bueller, bro. Oh, my God. I have it right here in front. All day. All day. Oh, thank you so much for that. I thank mean, you. do you ever edit in these? Yeah. Like pull things out? Oh, so yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, cool. What, I'm right. I've something? been doing punch up for my. No, I'm going to tell you something okay. that you'd have to pull. Yeah, yeah. I just did it this past, this week. I, oh, last week. I wrote punch up on the third draft. Are you happy with what you did? Yeah, I mean, he's happy too. And like, okay. I'm, he's, it's really cool. Well, it, how does, how does. Like punching up for a script work. I go through and and I mean I've done it. Well, with, what do you need to take out of here? Just so just okay, because you could just say you punch up scripts and that could be fine. Yeah, just yeah, don't yeah. Want, I just want to know what you need out. To yeah, but punch up. I've done punch up on movies where it's like, hey, take a look at this first act, and they give me the pages and like, is this story tracking? Then I'll get ones for scenes. We need a joke here, and like I'll go through and do a joke punch. There'll be ones who like go through it and just punch up one certain character. You know stuff like. Interesting. All different wow. ways. Do they take it as you being critical to the, or the writer's not involved? How does that No, work? this is the writer. Oh, interesting. And then I did one, there was this movie on uh, Hulu, it came out a couple years ago. They just did a second one, it's called The Binge. You, I don't know if you saw it, but it's pretty funny. Sounds familiar. Vince Vaughn was in it. Yeah. Anyway, I did punch up on that, and I would just like, it was just like, give us as many jokes as you can. Then it was like, check this, do this. And I, I would just give like, you know, stuff like that. How do you get your name in the ring for that? How do you throw your hat in the ring? I wrote a script with the guy who produced that Got movie it. and then i was just hitting him up like hey man i would love to work and he's like do you want to do any punch-up work and i was like yeah okay. and then i punched up two other movies that I, he was working I on i actually like punching stuff up because i do it on the show all the time yeah you but know, can well. you change the plot at all what do you can, no. if they're having a problem with the plot yeah yeah yeah. you know oh, interesting I, for me at punch-ups is always just like jokes you know like right. okay. but uh it's fun i i because i like going in because it gives you a starting point you know like and i like tooling around yeah. and making something work it's like a puzzle you know like yeah, so they've I, already I done love the heavy lifting up. by getting the job right done. right also you know sometimes when you get to studio level punch up the money's crazy ridiculous crazy and if you're an onset punch up guy like you're just on set every day <sighs> there to come up with jokes yeah stupid money the heat is on but you're there yeah i had friends that were making twenty five thousand a week who are not on a punch-up job they're not comics. no they are they are comics. Yep. Okay. a week a week and there's four of them <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Didn't Carrie Fisher famously uh, doctor scripts a lot? I don't know. Maybe. I think she was like a Hollywood script doctor, like for, for show. Interesting. I heard my friends had a movie. They they needed a punch up. They did a table read. Flew this guy in who's a writer. He came in. They did a table read. Everyone left except the producers, the director, and this guy. And he goes, they want, it was a, a pass on the script for more heart. They needed more heart. The guy goes, page 18. They're like, yeah, they go three-quarter down. They're like, you can put heart in here. And then he just did that through the whole script, and then he left. They paid him $125,000. Oh, oh, my God. God. Didn't even say what the heart would be or what you could add. Just where you could put the yeah. heart. So a lot of times when I've done passes, I'll be like, hey, man, I feel like you could go with some heart here. Like, what's the backstory between them? Where did they meet? And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, well, why don't we create that backstory? And then, like, we would drop it in and stuff like that. But, oh, so wow. crazy. People yeah. go to school and go into debt to know a trade. Yeah. This guy just knows heart. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. to not say what. Well, that's so that, annoying. If that was the level this guy was at. Like, yeah, I think imagine he was, he's like, put art here, put it here. And they leave. He's like, well, what the fuck we put there? Well, some of those guys might say, I want writing credit. If I'm going to give you like actual stuff, right. I want writing credit. Right. Anyway. Um, so back to, back the, to the pancakes. pancakes. So then I got so, to the ne Then yeah. I got to a level where I was like making breakfast sandwiches for the kids. And I'm like, I'm just going to make two extra breakfast sandwiches. And I'm going to cut them in half. So there'll be four total. Because it's not just my daughter's teacher. She's in first grade. And the other first grade teacher, Mr. O., she, the, the her teacher will go over to Mr. O and be like, "Hey, River's dad made 
pancakes. You want something? He's like, yeah. So words getting out I, at the back to school night last week. I never met Mr. O. And so River, my daughter was like, Hey, you want to come over to Mr. O's room? And I go, yeah. So I went over, I go, Hey, Mr. O, I'm, J- I'm River's dad. And he goes, Oh, you're the pancake guy. And I'm no like, yeah. And he goes, Oh, thanks for sending those in. Oh, so you don't think that she hands them to them and they walk into the teacher's lounge and put them in the pail? I don't know. Because, and then, and then, and then they tell could. Her, oh, thank you, Trevor. They, they could, but I never got complaints. And even if they were complaining, I just didn't care. Well, let me ask you this now. Yeah. How's he supposed to eat that? Just like, like a Nilla wafer? It's dry and cold. Nilla wafer. Two things the pancake shouldn't no, be. No, they, dude, they're still warm when they get to school, buddy. So a, a warm, dry pancake. Not dry. Don't, don't the say hand. they're dry. Well, okay, so That's they're moist. And deli- they're moist, yeah. Okay. And let's be honest. You're a, school, you're a school teacher, right? Yeah. You got to get up. You're teaching first grade, dude. You're teaching first grade. You think you're getting a hearty breakfast or getting... No, you get into school with whatever you got, and all of a sudden someone hands you a chocolate chip warm pancake that you can just pop in your mouth real quick before you got to... A little boost energy before you start the saying. day. I get it. If I it's mean, they're still crashing warm, around ten thirty. You know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. They're gonna. Yeah. No, but I. So then he eats the the chocolate chip pancake in front of the class while he's. Still- I don't know their schedule. I'm not interviewing him about I, I'm it. I'm fascinated that he. I wonder if he opens the tinfoil and then like holds it like he's holding a cookie, and then teaches them phonics while he's chewing on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I will say we had a back to school night and me and my ex were there. We go together. You know, we have a really good relationship and we're sitting there and the, the my daughter teacher goes, hey, thanks for like bringing in those pancakes. And, and I go, yeah, of course. And my ex is like, I will not be making pancakes. Because <laughs> she's more aligned with you. Like, th- this would be like, no, 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 no. Right, right. Germs, like not, it's not a, like a question of her wanting to do it. I think it would be like, I wouldn't put someone in the position where they would need to eat my pancakes. Sure. Yeah. But I tell you, at its core, it's a little slice of Americana and I love it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I yeah. think there's something nice about it so speaking of something nice about it lucky charms have marshmallows they sure do yeah. you know what I'm saying? so well, i mean if you want to call them marshmallows they're dehydrated <clears throat> sal i mean you forgot the chant DeRosa's rosa's gonna be upset oh my god DeRosa. all right all right so basically as an, another to rosa made up chance yeah so i've uh, seen it before but i'm not it's like time for uh tst buds is how we start it and then we go and then when it's time to get into the battle i say it's time to be a is this what i say B A T T L E buds. Now with the battle buds. Battle buds. Because yeah, we're yeah, shifting yeah. gears. Yeah. So we do that. And then we usually chant, no matter what happens, I love you, or it's time to get salty three times. And then we either insult each other uh, just to get our engines revving. Uh-huh. Or like, I've uh, seen that. Or, 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 or I guess no matter what happens, I love you is, is, is enough. Yeah. We, no matter what happens, I love you came about because he was taking the stress from this arguments home from the food arguments. Sounds very Joe. Exactly. I actually so, would love for him to compliment you. We should f- enforce that on. So no matter how I love you, no matter how, and then you compliment. And then you have to compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We never did that. Okay. So we have two powerhouse cereals. <laughs> well, no matter what I do, this is why it was oh, I, why I wanted Joe here because yeah. it's so easy to go with, where I do. I do align a lot with your tastes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And um, so I do love you. I, no matter what, I'm gonna yeah, love you yeah. at the end, and I'm not gonna take any of this home. Right. Exactly. I, and I also know my cereals better. <laughs> I mean, it's just that simple, bro. You know what I mean? I will tell you what else they're not taking home: pancakes, because you're giving them out to everybody who fucking take them. Uh, so, 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 so all good. So we have two powerhouse cereals now. Yeah. I had not tasted cinnamon toast crunch until the pandemic, and I know I've heard its lore. I've heard its legend. How did you get that long in life that you didn't have cinnamon toast? Crunch? I'll tell you. You know, I don't. Cinnamon might have thrown me because I'm thinking of like. I'm uh, gonna are you t- going to try and tell me you're not a cinnamon fan? No, I do like cinnamon, but okay. here I'm thinking. Cinnamon, like big red cinnamon, in my cereal. You know what, wow. I'm, what I'm saying? And I wasn't, I wasn't thinking such like a bakery s- cinnamon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though it's based on bakery cinnamon. Yeah, it's cinnamon toast crunch, and it's also it, like there's not an item in the baked goods world where cinnamon isn't a star. Cinnamon yeah. roll, uh, coffee cake, yeah. coffee cake, bro. Okay, morning bun. I mean, anything. You yeah. put cinnamon in your pancakes. You put it in batter. You, anything cinnamon's on is a win. It is. It is. And I, I don't know why. Straight up, it's not. Straight up, it's not. You ever not. pounded cinnamon? I never. I, I have. I never did. I threw up. I yeah. have. Yeah. There's a bar in Boston, and like they play games in, behind the house at the end of the night, drinking games, and one of the losers, you have to pound cinnamon, and I had to do it, and it was Dangerous? Horrible. I don't know. I think you Choke? could die. Yeah. 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 
Uh, the Cinnamon dangerous. Challenge is a viral internet food challenge. Participants film themselves eating a spoonful of ground cinnamon in under 60 seconds without drinking anything, with the video yep. being uploaded to the internet as evidence. The challenge is difficult, carries substantial health risks, because the cinnamon coats and dries the mouth and throat, resulting in coughing, gagging, vomiting, and inhalation of cinnamon. Yep. We were drinking gin this night, too, can by the in way. Turn, nobody drinks gin. This is crazy. Unless it's in a cocktail. Or yeah, it was it was like the bougiest cocktail restaurant okay, okay. in Boston. That's it then. Because yeah, I used to have old guys come in and just order a gin on the rocks. Yeah, that's an they alcoholic. Were old in I know the guy too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Niels. Niels. Yeah, yeah. No, Niels was the guy that in my bar that used to come in. Oh, really? Niels. He was a, a retired UCLA oh, professor. And he'd come in and he'd have gin martinis. Oh, really? Three. Yeah. Like it's nothing. Yeah. Tastes like goddamn turpentine or whatever. It tastes like something. Yeah. Vine soul. I don't know what it tastes like. Did he have that red face? I feel like gin gives you a he face. He didn't. He was a great guy. He would bike there. Sometimes like his daughter had to come get him. And then during... He'd bike there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then after... And then when they were looking for Osama Bin Laden... And his daughter had to come get him anyway? Then when they were looking for Osama Bin Laden, he would bring in maps... And like he and his buddies would sit there like this. He might be right here. Retired UCLA professor. Drinking gin martinis. Guy was delusional. I'm telling you. I love a guy who bicycles up. What is three gin martinis? Opens a map and says, oh, some of his lots. He's got to be right about here. It's a one of a kind guy. Yeah. And then calls his wife. No, his daughter. His, daughter his wife wasn't him. around. He screeches up. I, he does that. I, I, want, I want to screech up like and screech. Like, like you know, yeah. peel out. He wore then a bike just, I want him to order all three mar gin martinis at one time. Mm -hmm. I want to open it. I go, he's here. And I want to pound all three martinis and call his daughter to come get him. By the way, this was a lunch shift. This wasn't a dinner Amazing. shift. Yeah, this was a lunch guy. Lunch drinker. Oh, That's shout it. out to him wherever he is. Yeah, we had those dead. types of mice. He's dead. He's dead. Okay. <laughs> we had those the cinnamon types of guys. Challenge, <laughs> fucking put him over the edge, dude. <laughs> cinnamon <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> so, so I think in my head, uh, like, when I was young, what year did it come right. out, Pimpy? Dude, Forever ago, but I think I think when I was not of the age to buy and control what cereals were being purchased, eighty four, eighty four. So I'll, there, I'm eight years old when it comes out. My it wasn't in my mom's rotation, and so I what just, was. We had, we had, we had all the the plain ones, right? Yeah. We had the Cheerios plain, Corn yep. Flakes plain, and Rice Krispies plain. Yeah, we did. Sometimes we did Raisin Bran, and then if we yep. fucked with sugar, we could get what we wanted. But it was like it was either Lucky Charms, Fruit Loops. Frosted Flakes. Okay. I'm in on everything so far. Captain Crunch with Berries and maybe Fruity Pebbles. Those are the fives I really like that would, that was sugary. I'm going to say this. I think when Cinnamon Toast Crunch came out, it disrupted the cereal CTT. category CTC. the same way Cool Ranch Doritos did. Really? I do. And I think, you think I, the whole cinnamon space was, was... I think people were just like, what the fuck? Why have... You know, like when you see a comedian do a joke and you're like, How? fuck, How was why no one, did I yeah, not yeah, think yeah, of yeah. that? That's what Cinnamon Toast Crunch right. did. And the same way Cool Ranch Doritos, when they Changed came into the game. the game, people were like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, they were a cereal disruptor. Yeah, yeah big okay. time. So I never had it. And then after I never had it, I got to tell you, like, in after a certain age, I was never, like, cereal curious. Yeah. You know, I stayed with my 10 staples, whatever it was, depending on my mood. Yeah. But I would never, I would never be like, you know, I never had this. Let me try it. Yeah. You know, unless I had it incidentally, like a honeycomb. I would never buy that. I would have it incidentally. Craig Hansen. I had a Craig Hansen's house. house. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, nah, I'm yeah. good on this. But you never got the variety pack when they started doing the little minis and then Cinnamon Toast Crunch was in there. It, I can't remember I, when I got introduced to it, but. I, I never did it. So, so for me, I, I lived a childhood without it. Now, Lucky Charms. When I was growing up, I think was uh, the BDS, the big penis swinging. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, Lucky Charms, I think, had every kid on lockdown. Well, I think I, Lucky Charms, that was the one where you would go to a kid's house and he had Lucky Charms. And you were like, oh, shit. That's also the kid who had like a fruit roll up at lunch at school. Yeah. And you're like, Man, your fucking parents are killing it. Yeah. Huh? I never had You know that. what I mean? Yeah. I never got like individual bag of chips in my lunch. Mine was like never. a plastic bag and you took a handful chips out. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, zip lock. shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. 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 My mom would wrap three cookies in tinfoil. Yeah. Exactly. I was allowed to have three. Yeah. I mean, and we'd have pickles wrapped in. Did oil. you go to school yeah. with pickles? Oh, yeah. No, late in life pickles for me. Yeah. Seltzer, pickles, mustard, all late in life. Yeah, mustard's a later in, late, late in the game. No, no kids I mean, like, like diving 20, into mustard. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But my mom, so uh, someone told me a trick, and kids, if you watch, I might have said this before, but the, one time there was a friend, family friend at the house, and my mom was like, you had, you know, three, only three guys who were at the table. And he goes, you know what to do, right? I said, right. He goes, you don't put the three in front of you. He goes, you take one at a time. She'll never know which one you're, what the number is that you're reaching for. <laughs> in that sitting, I ate a sleeve of Oreos in that sitting. Yeah. 
And uh, the reason that I might die early is because of that man. <laughs> now, did you guys know of Lucky Charms had a sweepstakes back in the day where the winner would win a live rabbit? <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> they had to no. stop it. They no wonder why it they got so many kids involved. Yeah, I mean, a live rabbit? Yeah, the parents were pissed. Well, okay, so let's 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 break this down. Lucky Charms has everything that's going to appeal to a kid. And, 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 and actually, to this day... Lucky Charms, I think, for me at least, was the first cereal to be like, we're putting the dehydrated marshmallows in there. Other cereals all followed suit. So many cereals that don't even deserve- Who, who that, came in later with the marshmallows oh, like a that? Lot, a lot of cereals that shouldn't even, like, it was just like, yeah, we'll throw marshmallows in. And you'd be like, what? That doesn't belong here. Yeah. It doesn't belong. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the Can marshmallows I the marshmallows are fun. Because I'll tell you, they, because they were dehydrated- Depending on the the stage that you ate the marshmallow, it was a different taste and texture experience, uh -huh. right? Yep. You get them off the top. There's a snap. There's a crunch. There's a dryness with with the milk, right? You get them in between. You got a slick coating on the outside, mm -hmm. which was nice on the tongue, but you would bite through and still in the center, you might get a snap. Yeah. You wait till the very end and they're soggy, but not in a bad way. I also like the way they dyed the milk. I also love the different shapes and colors, but then they were they didn't just stop there. They were innovative. They kept going. When, when I was a kid, they didn't have purple horseshoes. <laughs> I lived through purple horseshoes. <laughs> it was green clovers, they blue gave stars, and yellow diamonds, and that was it. Just like Tricks only had three colors. Yeah. It was orange, red. It was maybe yellow, orange, red, and maybe, maybe primary purple colors. They were came primary later. colors. Yeah. Right? And so that's one thing. I also like that you can choose how you want to eat Lucky Charms, right? Like some some people will eat all the marshmallows right away. That's not what I do. You either eat you could eat it all the marshmallows. Or you could eat it uh, distribute it in the spoon. But when you're really like kind of into it, you know what you do. You eat everything but the marshmallows. Yeah, and, you and then you have a bowl. And I think they might have done oops all marshmallows at one point, and that was definitely like diabetes. Uh, yeah. I think you can buy them separate. I think you can buy the marsh the uh, really the marshmallows separate. Yeah. Really, I think you can. What do you mean? Oh, so they still do that? It's Lucky Charms only marshmallows. Listen to me. Let me tell you something about Lucky Charms, okay? Yeah. They're magically delicious, but what else? I, I, I will, I want to give you, I just want to give like a, a, a nod for what I do like about them. Because mm -hmm. I think they're maybe the only cereal that if you ate dry, it's still good. It's a snack. It's it's a snack. It is. And if you pull the marshmallows out and just had it, look at that. Oh my God. Two and a half pounds to $30. <laughs> Should keep one in the office. <laughs> if you took the marshmallows out and you ate that cereal, it's still a good cereal. But I would still would. I'm not. I, listen, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say I like Lucky Charms. It's gonna. It's gonna. It's probably gonna fall in my top five. I, I, okay. Okay. So you're I'm doing still a taking thing. cinnamon toast crunch over it. Yeah. Okay. But I will say this too. I'm not I don't idiot. like. I don't really like marshmallows. We talked earlier about how peeps are terrible. Peeps are gross. I think I don't marshmallows like are overrated. Yeah. I, I don't mind it melted on a s'more. But other than that, I really. Like, but I like a dehydrated marshmallow. Yeah. Go yeah. figure. Yeah. What's that I don't, about? I don't know. It's it's like they're they're just taking it out. I mean, do you like dehydrated fruit? It depends on my day, mood, and the fruit. I will ask you this. Do you have a mascot? Because I thought you had bakers the and cinnamon the, toast crunch definitely had we, we just more. pulled up a thing and it was there was no there was no mascot on that. Let me tell you something right now, Sal. If you need a mascot to sell you on the food, Ooh. I don't need it. You think a Keebler elf is what turned me? You know what I mean? Well, no, I don't I don't need a mascot. What's the What's the, you know, the the Bruins are the best hockey team in the NHL right now. They're going to set the all-time record for wins. You think there's some, you think th they have a bear that maybe goes around. No one gives a shit about the bear. And look at this guy. Well, who, I don't no, care wait, wait, hold about on. that guy. First of all, it, it was three bakers and a knock, knock, who's there? Rice Krispies called and you got a nice fat lawsuit on you. <laughs> okay. Because that's bullshit. To they have probably three made bakers by the same company. All these companies all right. are in bed now, with each other. Now, now three of them are gone. Now it's just one old kooky looking guy. It says Chef Wendell. Chef what? Wendell. That's his name. Wendell? Who, who is this? None is of it matters. That's go, the point. Can we go to the, page, to the wiki page and go to the mascot? I disagree. I think that when you eat a cereal, I think that. It's the total package. Packaging and cereal matters, I believe. Uh, was there a prize inside? What games on the back? Uh, you know, I, I get like that. The, I like the packaging, especially as a kid. So I do think it adds to it does experience to the experience. I I mean, lucky you the think they've given out that. Where's the bakers? Where's breakfast? Cinnamon toast crunch. Child labor. Listen, they came out in the 80s, you know? 
With cinnamon and sugar shakers. With cinnamon toast crunch bakers. It's the Which, by the way, I have another thing to ask. What? I never heard of cinnamon toast in my life. Oh, really? Folks, want to take a moment to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Factor. This spring, you're going to need nutritious, convenient meals to energize you for warmer, active days and keep you on track, reaching your goals, doing what you want to do, living your best life. And guess what? That's where Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you out. They're going to help you fuel up fast with ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, you'll eat well, and you'll tackle everything on that to-do list. It's that simple. Too busy to cook with the spring? Well, with Factor, you can skip the trip to the grocery store. You can skip the chopping and the prepping and the cleaning up and all that stuff. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. Two minutes. I've eaten these things. They're delicious. They're uh, coming in many different options, too, by the way. You can get uh, keto. You can get uh, calorie smart. You can get vegan. You can get veggie. Protein plus. Whatever you want. I, I like this program. I like this company. I like how this works. They send you the meals after you pick what you want that fits within your dietary preference and you got it right there in the fridge. You pop it in the microwave. Two minutes, you're eating. And that's all there is to it. You want to cut back on that takeout? I know I do. Get Factor instead. Not only is Factor Factor cheaper than takeout, it, it, the meals are ready faster than restaurant delivery. Okay. Anyway, uh, you get where I'm going with this. Head to factormeals.com slash tastebuds50 and use code tastebuds50 to get 50% off your first box. Can't beat that. That's code tastebuds50 at factormeals.com slash tastebuds50 to get 50% off your first box. Folks, I want to talk to you about Shady Rays. What's worse than buying a pair of expensive sunglasses and then losing them right after you get them? I have done that a zillion? Is it a zillion? It might be a zillion times. I have lost more sunglasses than I have umbrellas at this point in my life. More than I've, I've lost more sunglasses than I've lost lighters. It drives me crazy. I've also broken sunglasses. I just, I can't stand it. But here's the deal. Shady Rays, help me fix this problem. Shady Rays makes high quality sunglasses that are not just as good or, in my opinion, better than the expensive ones. Uh, but you're getting them for a fraction of the price. That's all there is to it. Shady Raids are durable. They're built to tackle all of life's little outdoor adventures or big outdoor adventures. The styles are timeless. They're on point, and they look good. I look good in a Shady Ray. How many things can you use the word shady with and say they make you look good? Well, I don't know many, but I do know one, Shady Rays. Anyway, uh, they're strong also, too. So here's the thing. You don't got to worry about breaking these things ever, all right? Every pair... Oh, by the way, you don't have to worry about losing them either because every pair of Shady Rays is backed by their industry-leading lost and broken replacements program. You break or lose your pair. The second you take them out of the box, they'll send you a replacement pair no questions asked. That's it. Shady Rays isn't happy unless you're happy. That's why they give you 30 days, too, to try them out. And if you don't like them, you can exchange them or return them for free. With every order, Shady Rays Impact Program works with nonprofits worldwide to make an impact on the lives of children and young adults, like building play sets for pediatric cancer patients uh, or uh, creating adventures for young adults with cancer and MS. Shady Rays is a good company, man. They're doing some really, really good stuff. Uh, so anyway, here's what I want you to do. What's better than getting one pair of Shady Rays and not worrying about if you break or lose them? Getting two. Getting two. Go to ShadyRays.com slash TasteBuds and use code TasteBuds for a limited time. When you buy one pair of Shady Rays, you'll get a second pair for free. That's S-H-A-D-Y-R-A-Y-S dot com slash TasteBuds. And then you use code taste buds to get your second pair of Shady Rays free. Shadyrays.com slash taste buds, promo code taste buds. Not, it's not cinnamon toast. You get a piece of toast, you heat it, you butter it so it builds up little puddles of butter. Then, if you're like me, a super dad, yeah. you have a jar, which I do have, in my cabinet that's mixed cinnamon and sugar together. 
with a little spoon, and then you go over and you go across the bread. Do you know how unbelievable that is in the morning before you head out it to school? It sounds delicious health-wise. I don't know. Everything in b- balance, buddy. Mm-hmm. They're getting scrambled eggs, fresh fruit, and then a piece of cinnamon but, but, toast. But, but, but so is that a thing that they took from? They just said it. No, but did they take, like, was cinnamon toast a thing? I had and it as a they, kid. And then they made it into a cereal, or was like they did this, and people were like, oh, cinnamon toast makes sense. I think, I, I mean, I don't know when it originated, but I've I never had, heard of it. My whole life, we would do that. Cinnamon you heard of it? sugar mixed. In the yeah, cafeteria. Yeah. Really? But is it because of this? No. no, no. Would do it. Oh, I remember the shrimp tails. I remember this. In this, in the, yeah, they found shrimp in uh, yeah. cinnamon toast crunch. I don't remember that at all. It was like two years ago. <laughs> Well, two years ago it didn't affect. Either way, I'd you know what? I'd still eat that box. No, throw the I shrimp found tails a rat in there. Snail on a rice aroni one time. <laughs> I swear to God, my mom found a, ra- a rat. The San Francisco tree. Yeah, a the rat San Francisco snail? tree. A a nails, nail. nails of a rat. Who identified? Oh, or a mild mouse, whatever. Nails, animal nails. How do you know they Little were claws? Oh, you you know, you just look at them. You are like that's a fucking nail. Oh my god, tooth nail, whatever the fuck it was. They it crunchy? was flesh of a non-human <laughs> in the rice aroni. And I remember like she saved it because we were like blown away. But I don't know what. I don't know what if we took any legal action. Did you see the rat inside of food that was served at a restaurant in Manhattan? No. Yeah, it's inside happened. the food. What do you in mean? the food. Yeah. What do you mean a, a cooked rat? Yeah. In the soup. Well, you know, we all wait. That I'm can sorry. Happen. A rat went into a into the soup. They scooped it out. Didn't notice. They served it. Look at it. It looks good. You're kidding me. Oh uh, yeah. What? Well, what's the rest of the items in there? And what? What? What restaurant is it? Yeah. What restaurant just closed for good? <laughs> Yeah, that's tough. A black, dead black rat floating in a soup. Gamiak? Gamiak in Manhattan. We ordered Sogo, Sogo, Sogoji, I don't want to, I don't want to butcher it, I already have. Yeah. Korean beef soup. Oh, that's tough, What would man. you do, Sal? What I, would you do? That's actually traumatic, I think. If if they put a spoonful of the broth in their mouth already, it that's, about that's half full eaten. trauma. Yeah, look how much has been eaten in that. Yeah, that's trauma right there. I mean, listen, Think if you haven't seen rat Ratatouille, went. Ratatouille, great film. Yeah. This could that's have the happened. Only thing that can, that's the only thing that could kind of soften the blow for them is they get Ratatouille as the mascot. And like, what do you want us to do? They, they cooked it. Enjoy. I mean, this is a, you, you liked him. There's a sequel in the make. Uh, so, 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 so I will say this. Imagine that, that rat. Yeah. He, imagine, like, he never knew what his fate was. He's going to drown in soup, not even in water. Yeah. He drowned in stock, in soup. But at yeah. least he, he must have been like, I can't believe this is happening to me right now. I'm drowning in boiling soup. Yeah. <laughs> I never soup, ever probably, thought it was happening to me. I wonder what he, what he died of. all the things of. that could kill him. Yeah. Soup. I mean, he finally got to the promised land. Yeah. and then yeah. it. That's something else. That's it. That's it. Um, so back to the cinnamon toast. Yeah. So now they what did they fired the three bakers and they just hired some, the uh, captain. Can we, Chef are, are we ser- seriously on uh, the mascot? Is, been, is is your angle he's been here? Retired to the back of the. He's just so then the you have no mascot anymore. You know what happened? They listen. Oh, sorry. Every, cinnamon emoji was the mascot. Now that's what I read. Before. What's a cinnamon emoji? Every now and then you got to get people. You know, you're trying to break into the the cereal game. Yeah. You know, so you got these three bakers or whatever mm-hmm. trying to get people know. First of all, what other cereal has taken over the markets as hardcore as these guys did. And I then they were just like, all right, we don't need a mascot anymore. We survive on taste. You know what I mean? Like everyone knows. That. This oh, is so the- that's it now. Now they're going back to three emojis. Look, I will say. I wish they looked more like toast. Right? They just look like your standard square flake. You understand? My, no. my, 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 my blue diamonds, yellow, hor- uh, purple horseshoes, and, yellow, you know, that they look like that. I have a diamond. I have a balloon. Right. I have a rain. You know, I have it. It looks like it. Yeah. You ever see them? They do the waffle, Chris, or the cookie, Chris, and it looks like cookies. It looks like waffles. Right. But this is doesn't matter because it's just delicious. Okay. Is there a better cereal milk than Cinnamon Toast Crunch? I haven't. There had- is no better. Is that right? What milk is going to taste better? Fruit Loops? No. No. No? Fruit Loops is just kind of tastes like a, a, a generic strawberry what milk. What about uh, Frosted Flakes? No. Frosted Flakes, you're going to have to weave through all the... Uh, Moldy, you know what I mean? Flakes, yeah, all those yeah, yeah. soggy flakes, dude. Frosted flakes, you got about eight seconds to enjoy a bite of that cereal. No, and I then love. It's done. I almost put full disclosure. I almost put frosted flakes up against them. And but I told I you, there'd be more to bite. I more to chew on. No pun with Lucky Charms. Yeah, but frosted flakes, I love eating them in all their stages as well. No, I love that at the end a, a sopping, a soppy, soppy uh, frosted flake. You do. Yeah, it's 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 the stages. I eat it in different stages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. I like, or, or you know, you do, you pour a little more in and you, you split the diff. I, I See, that's where I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Know your game. You know what I mean? How is your, t- it's kind of crunching the name. Yeah. How do you sustain in milk? It's, it's, it holds How up pretty it? strong. Yeah. I will say now you, you don't want to just leave it and then go right. do something else and come back to it. You, what about it's soggy is no good. It, no, it's still delicious. still delicious. It's the it's an amazing taste. Okay, the taste is everything. It's the cinnamon. It's the sugar. It's sweet. It's everything you want in a breakfast cereal. If you don't want sugar in your cereal, then just get out of town. You're you're in the wrong game here. There's a cinnamon toast crunch spread. You see that? Yeah, I see it. You ever try that? No, I haven't. What what could that be? But listen, I'm not saying a cereal needs to be great because it transfers over into other categories. You know what I mean? Okay. If I'm gonna do a spread, I'm gonna go with a Nutella. I you know what I mean? Saying what you get a lucky charms come out. I just want to know who, who planted a flag first there. Lucky Charms came out in 1964. Well, there you have it. This is 1964. Wow, that's something else. It's been around a long time. Now, I think Lucky it's Charms been in the zeitgeist. I think Lucky Charms is impressive to Lucky Charms ice cream. I think Lucky Charms. You know, I'll tell you not to deviate really quick. I'll say I, I think Lucky Charms is impressive to a child now. Mm-hmm. Imagine. Imagine 65 years ago. These kids must have been ripping their own genitals off. They, they don't know what to do with themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They must have been like, oh my God. It's fun. The idea of some kid ripping his nuts off. <laughs> just just oh, eating, a, eating Lucky Charms and just doing doing running outside with a bloody crotch. Just being like, I couldn't take the taste. <laughs> yeah, that, that must have I mean, the 1964 right, so Lucky. Can we, the, first of all, the 1964 Lucky looks, he actually looks like a character from like a, like a, like the Rudolph. Yeah, yeah, like he the, does. What do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? those? And look, he's feeding it to animals. The yeah, guy's a little the fucked up, that dude. Do yeah, and the he's 19, an animal whisper. Nineteen seventy-three, Lucky Charms. Lucky, he looks demented. He, he looks cracked out. Seventy-five looks the only deviation they've ever. Seventy-five is a different person. Yeah, I don't know. Literally what they a were different doing person. There. It looks like Fred Flintstone. And look, they're trying to it, sell eight Flintstone. essential vitamins and iron. Get out of here, man. That's crazy that they did that. I actually read that uh, Lucky Charms was banned in New York for a couple years until they said the vitamins line. Then it was allowed back in New York State. R- Interesting. Really? Mm-hmm. Look at the 2010 Lucky Wait, Charms. Wait, what year was that? Uh, here, it's over here. Look at 2010 Lucky. He looks like a complete sociopath. <laughs> That's he the year like they a, banned it. He looks like a murderer. <laughs> uh, 60s. Oh, in the 60s. Children to sell unhealthy children. foods. They're all unhealthy. All that's why everything is a you got to like fortify with the, yeah wow that's crazy. you got to have a little moderation yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. and a little hack that like my ex taught me when my kids come out to breakfast now I just put the fruit out so when they come out the fruit is there so it's like you know they're gonna get some healthy sugars in because they're gonna throw that in their mouth no matter what and same yeah. at dinner time you just put out some veggies on the table ahead of time oh. so when they're looking for a snack they just grab some carrots or tomatoes that's a good idea so they're just eating those things because you want them getting you know balance you want balance idea. in everything you don't want them thinking you can't have sugar let them have sugar but balance it out with the veggies and the fruits. And Has Cinnamon Toast Crunch ever deviated from the original flavor in any way, shape, or form? Listen, I didn't go and do a, like a full study on this. I don't think so. I think it's been the same as it's always been. It's never changed I don't in feel like my I've taste. Heard, oh, a Dulce de, Dulce leche. de leche. So that's a caramel Cinnamon Toast Crunch? They're all going to try something different, oh. Sal. Right? Oh, well, oh, here you go. There's your answer. Okay. Cinnagram Toast Crunch. Now, I love a graham cracker. Dolce de leche toast crunch, cinnamon crunch churros. I bet those are awesome. Cinnamon toast crunch pancake mix. Pancake mix. Cake mix. I think that's going to be too much for me, to be mix. honest. Jesus Christ. Chocolate toast crunch. Now, that's French toast cinnamon crunch. Cinnamon toast crunch coffee cake. Wow. Oatmeal. Oh, did, boy, did they ever expand their yeah. skews. Oh, look at this. Cinnamon toast crunch cinnamon milk. They did it. They did it. Coffee creamer. Holy, holy God. The whole coffee cream or category is too crunch. much. Apple pie, toast crunch. All right, somebody getting a meeting now. Cinefuego? <laughs> Hot cinnamon cereal? That's a pouch. Reusable pouch. Also, bugles? Bugles, cinnamon toast crunch. Oh, come on, man. Oh, yeah, those are coded. That's got to be good. Swiss Miss? I mean, God damn it. A lot of crossovers. They did a lot yeah. to brand out. But, well, I mean, that scares me. That scares me. Because you, you, you really threw out a wide net there. That, that's getting the battle. I don't know if Lucky Charms has that many variations. No, I think Lucky Charms does. But they're all going to try this shit. You know what I mean? They're all going to try doing this. What else do they get linked up with? They're under the same... General Mills, dude. Oh, they're both on the jam? Yeah. I mean, look, at you got, there's Lucky your Swiss Charms Miss Lucky s'mores. Charms right there. Oatmeal, same thing. The Lucky Charm bar, you know. And then what's this? Jet, Jet Puff Lucky Charms Magically Delicious Marshmallows. Pancake mix. 
cupcake mix. Jet puffed. It's the opposite of the dehydration. I wonder what those taste like. All right, so we're out there. We're out there. They out there. I'm just saying, pound for pound, mm-hmm. if I'm gonna get a cereal, if I'm gonna get cereal, I'm going cinnamon toast crunch. That's what I will go. That will that's be my your, number, that's one your number one take. That's my number one draft. Mm-hmm. If I'm drafting cereals, I'm gonna go one. I'm not saying Lucky Charms isn't gonna be up there. They're, they they would definitely it's be a starter my one, on my it's team. Not my two, but they'll be in the top five, maybe top eight. Who? Lucky. They're not your one. No, Captain Crunchberries is. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So I wouldn't even have Captain Crunchberries in my top fifteen. You know that's crazy. And nope. That's 100%. widely known I as, even as one of the pinnacles of, of cereal. <laughs> when they do the berries in with it? One of cereal's brightest moments. <laughs> yes. Don't even get me started on the Oops All Berries. Those are the top 10 of sales. In sales, okay. Oh. But <laughs> sales is nothing that should be... Raisin Bran's eight. You know what I mean? Special K is seven. I don't know who still gets Special K. Who eats Wheaties? How are they still in business? Who eats Wheaties? Where's Wheaties on this list? Cheerios, Honey Nut Cheerios, Frosted Flakes, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Lucky Charms. So we got ourselves a battle because they almost show us Fruit Loops. So I everything I, I I mess with everything on there except Cocoa Puffs and Special K, which I could eat Special K. Look at this so down here. Uh, the, wait, it's worth noting that the popularity of specific cereals can vary depending on factors such as region, age group, and cultural backgrounds. Right. Like I I. I I don't ever think this is something that's important is like how much because the, some of the greatest bands of all time are not going to be like wildly popular. Sure. Some of the best comedians aren't going to be. You have to you have to be you have to be bland or you have to hit average. You have to hit like to be hugely successful. Right. Right. You know, I understand that. Now, yeah. every now and then things are going to collide. They're going to be like smart, funny, entertaining, deep and hit a wide like Seinfeld was very specific, you know what I mean? And it was very broad. Right, okay. So So that's what you're saying, cinnamon toast crunches. What I'm saying is sales don't matter to me. Okay. Okay. And, you know, I just, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best cereal. It's an indication, though, of how many many fans are of the cereal. True. So we were both top five, so we'll see. It's going to be a close battle. Let's go to the phones. I will say this, though. Top five, and you had a 20-year head start. Okay, that's again, that's generational. 1964, that's been around. What are you going to start giving your kids? I'm going to give them Lucky Charms. I had it. You know what I mean? My guys, they they came out in 85, 84. Well, you if you want to go start. there, I think there are much younger people on social media versus older people. 100%. So I don't think like the 60-year-olds are going to be on here voting on this poll. I don't know. What I'm saying is your 60-year-olds had a chance to get it out to more people. If I was if I was in the sixties and I had kids that were ten years old in the sixties and Lucky Charms came out. Now you got kids in the sixties eating Lucky Charms who were given to their kids in the eighties, who were given to their kids and you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm 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 trying to figure out if I if I validate as, as an argument. Oh, it's definitely it's definitely valid as an argument. It's definitely All valid. Right. You sound like a computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put it through the you know, see if it works. Uh, all right, we're gonna go to the phones. Uh, which is just Twitter comments. Yeah. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is a hug from your grandma. Lucky Charms are a grope from your weird smelly uncle. They taste like sadness. Wow. I, I don't know if Lucky Charms are a grope from your uncle. I don't know if... Uh, so so Cinnamon Toast Crunch is... is it, it, it reminds you of loving family and Lucky Charms reminds you of incestual sexual assault. I don't know. That's a stretch to me. <laughs> lucky Charms? More like a lucky if you get it, anything nice in your mouth. Cinnamon all the way. <laughs> that was a, this guy is, doesn't know how to diss. <laughs> but it it, it, he's it is like, true. Lucky. It what? is true. Without a marshmallow on that spoon, it's kind of just. I don't mind it. It's cat food. Nah, because if you don't get a marshmallow, it has that look. that's just more marshmallow than next. Or it makes you, the absence makes the heart grow fonder. I do want to say this. Look at this next one. Y'all ever heard of cho- chocolate Lucky Charms? That shit is magically delicious. That's not even a vote for Lucky Charms. She's 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 going away from even your cereal. But, gonna, but you, it has to, since there's no nuance on the polls, we allow the whole skew. Okay. Okay. Next one. The milk tastes better after cinnamon toast crunch and feels less like eating candy for breakfast than does Lucky Charms. Okay. The soggy Lucky Charms can take a walk. Cinnamon toast crunch. All the way. I'm getting hammered right now. You're getting killed. Lucky Charms are for poor people. <laughs> Jesus they, Christ. Tom Segura, the same Tom price, Segura would agree, I they're bet. They're the same price point. 100% of Cinnamon to- to- Toast Crunch is good. Only 30% of Lucky Charms are good. Yeah, but you can't. No, because 100% marshmallow is not good. It's the balance that makes it work. I understand, but the thing is, you need the marshmallow to make your cereal work. Yeah. 
There's no other thing. We're not trying to. We're yeah, not trying you to need fool the you. Cinnamon. I'm not trying just to fool you thing, with just anything. Just because my thing has more mass, you need cinnamon to make your, yours. Isn't toast crunch? Let me ask you this: Fun Dip. Take Fun Dip. Yeah. You able to go? Are you cool with not having the stick, or is I, the stick an element to you? I love the stick. Exactly. I want the stick. And you need them both. Yeah. You need. But you, you need, need a cinnamon. gimmick. It's part of, that's of course. That's in the title. But, it's, but they're both ingredients. Why? Because my ingredient has more mass. You take cinnamon out of yours. Same mass. No one's same eating mass. toast crunch. A pound of cinnamon toast crunch and a pound of Lucky Charms are the same. Is my point. All right, so the only way you can legally buy Lucky Charms is with an EBT card. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Tony. From Sausage Tits. <laughs> Sugary, Sugary packing pack. peanuts versus cinnamon. I am getting hammered. Thank you, Jack Bertelli. Magically delicious all day, babe. Could live without those cannibalistic pieces of cardboard. Plus, gotta shout out Santino for landing the role of the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> he can get that in the live action. What about panda bowls and almond milk? I don't know what that is. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is the greatest cereal ever, period. Boom. Thanks, David. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is not even close. Man, should I have done Frosted Flakes? It's time to admit that Lucky Charms, go back. Lucky Charms is an inferior product. Wow. <sighs> Scroll, Pimpy. Lucky Charms are better of the two. Couple little marshmallows per oat cereal magic. Okay. Champ Cocoa Pops get... I see ya. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is the champagne of cereal. Lucky Charms is the Mountain Dew of cereal. Is only good because of the marshmallows. Agree. I don't think Cinnamon say. Toast Crunch puts on... Like has this air of sophistication about it. I uh, Yeah, I don't either. I don't think... First of all, these are all cost the same amount. You know what I mean? What right. are we really doing? Right. Here? What are, you know? Lucky Charms is Cheerios with styrofoam marshmallows thrown in it. <laughs> Lucky Charms tastes like a headache. I don't agree. There's nothing to not agree. Dude, you're getting pummeled. I, I am getting It's amazing from I'm the start to finish. Pummeled. Perfect crunch and the sweet cinnamon milk at the end. Delightful. And luck, Lucky Charms, good for two bites. And then mud water at the end is disgusting. Well, this guy, our guy here, M Dog Duck One, has put Don't Make Me Choose and has literally uh, someone with a gun to the head. So I guess it's a tough call for them. I have never met right underneath him, Pim. I have never met anyone that actually eats the Lucky Charm cereal and not just the marshmallows. Well, <laughs> you gotta meet more people. Scroll down, scroll up one second. We just passed it because it was funny. The only thing lucky about Lucky Charms is the Lucky Green stool it produces. All right. Oh, All right. I, well, by the way, you ready for this? Yeah. My daughter's birthday. Uh, when she was three or four, I got a Star Wars cake and I got black chocolate frosting, and it was the dopest cake ever. Yeah. And then the next day at school, parents were coming up to me like, "Yo." You see your kid's poop? Everyone's poop was neon green. Show no, me pics. No Give me way. pics. Yeah. No way. Neon green. Wow. And I was like, yeah. And I was you bragging about the, the cake to everybody. You know, I got everywhere I go, Sal. Uh, Have them on a bracelet, which is the only way I care for them. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is the real party here. Oh, wow. Is there no Cinnamon Toast Crunch in the UK? But she voted for it anyway. <sighs> Flavored cardboard. A lot of cardboard. All right. All right, well, um, I, I clearly did not win this. The marshmallow. Uh, so we go to this segment called Humble Pie right now. We got a drum roll. Pimpy will roll in the pie chart. And Pimpy's choosing. Uh, we got 10,000 votes. Pimpy's choosing Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And here we go, baby. Oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. It's about 32%. That's not bad. Cinnamon Toast Crunch wins handily. But according to the... I saw two Lucky Charms favorable posts in there. I thought I was going to get like 90-10. Yeah. Cinnamon Toast Crunch with the win, 67.7% to 32.3%. Now, I now wonder what can beat Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I almost want to, like, I, I now wonder what can beat that because Lucky Charms is popular. It is. I don't think anything can beat it. I, it telling you, I you think, think it's think the that best cereal. Be, you think that'll beat... Uh, don't forget. Look at the Captain Crunchberries, Fruit Loops. Cheerios, honey I nut. think it will take Captain Crunch Berries and just fucking kick it to the side and it won't even be in the conversation. I got to know. I got to know now. And then Fruit Loops, I think, will be in there. But you saw, like, the top sellers. You had Cheerios. You had Honey Nut Cheerios. Those are parents. Right. And those are, like, they tried to sell us on that. Frosted Flakes, again, that's just been around for so long. And then you got CTC. And then, you know what I'm saying? It's just. Wow. I did, I did not think it would be like that. I thought, I was, I thought it was going to be a. That was good. That was a good battle. I'm surprised. And I and now it's ma making me want to it's making me want to do like a tournament or something. A cereal tournament maybe. Oh, I mean, I think you could you could get you start with 24 cereals and yeah. go head to head. Yeah. I think that's a, I think I think that'd be fun to watch. And I think Special K would get its ass handed to it in the first round. Special K, that's crazy that's up It's there. insane. Uh I mean, people are use that's a desktop computer. 
people <laughs> people that voted yeah. for special. That, that's it, that's an old person. It totally is. Do uh, you think we could do tournaments live? We're doing a live taste buds on May tenth. Um, you probably will hopefully see an insert with all the specific details on how and when to get the ticket. We're streaming live We're, on May tenth. We have an insane battle lined up and tons of surprise guests and a really really big payoff uh with something else which you can't mention it just now right now but uh i was thinking could we do a live tournament yes. based on audience applause just for fun at the live because we're, we're most likely going to do the live streaming with a live audience gotcha so uh i probably yeah well probably do a qr code i don't know how you would measure the crowd audience clapping. but with our ears oh okay no like by round of applause, you got sweet sixteen of cereals, <laughs> but no you got to go. You got to taste them. You have to literally taste them. Yeah, but assuming everyone's had them, yeah. right? But there's a difference between like tasting Lucky Charms up against Honey Nut Cheerios, and you might be like, you know what? I got to give it to Honey Nut Cheerios right now. Because in the moment, you because there's one something. Back to I mean, back. there is a Honey Nut Cheerio is a great. Remember, you've talked about the simplicity of taste before, right? You know what I mean? That is a, a taste that's simple and clean and pure, like Italian food. You know? Okay. All right. Well, there it is, uh, May 10th. Mark your calendars. We're streaming live that night. It's going to be a super-sized bonus episode. A lot of fun surprises. More details to come if you haven't already seen something at the top of the episode when we did plugs. Jay, uh, one more time on the special. Where can they see you? What, what, what do you want to plug? All that stuff. Uh, well, if this is before April 19th, then it's already it's coming out April 19th on YouTube, backslash Jay Larson Comedy. It's called Sounds Like Bruce, my second self-produced special. And if it's after 419, go over there to my YouTube and you can watch it, share it, like it, comment. Please. All of that helps. And uh, I appreciate you having me on, buddy. This is a lot of fun. You're one of my favorite people. I love you to death. Uh, we, the way we close it is the winner says, I still love you to me. I still love you, Sal. I love you too. Thank you, buddy. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man. You